Hello and welcome! My name is Professor von Sprogitz, world famous adventurer, philanderer and all-round mad scientist. Today with my assistant Fraulein Gutentag, Gutentag. we will try to attempt the impossible. To take the world's largest floor-standing speaker, a hi-fi beast, and make it very, very tiny without losing any of the huge sounds that it produces. Now, I won't lie to you or any of you. This could be very, very dangerous. So if you are ever nervous with this position, you should probably turn away now. Fella, if you please, I would like you to engage the shrinking laser. Yeah, Professor. Okay, here we go. Nothing could go wrong. It'll be fine. Fraulein! Fraulein! <gasps> oh, Fraulein! Oh, I'm so sorry. What did I do to you? I turned you into a dachshund. Oh, nein! Would you like a biscuit? Come on, then. Hello, and welcome back to Small Room Audio. Today, we're going to review the Neat IOTA Alpha. Now this is a follow-up review to the neat IOTA review we did last time. And I say follow-up because a lot of the things that we said in that review definitely ring true for the IOTA Alpha as well. So if you haven't checked that out, please do go and see that first because we're not gonna cover off all the same ground because otherwise it'd be the same review twice, only with more. And the more is what we're gonna focus on today so you can know what you're gonna get if you spend the extra bit of money to get this, the neat IOTA Alpha, a miniature floor stander, as I would say, with a cool base bit on the bottom and some really scary spikes. And of course, the iota part with the lovely planar tweeter and the woofer in the top. So, what do you get for your money? Apart from those very scary spikes, which may come useful if you need to defend yourself for any reason with a floor standing speaker. So the Neat IOTA Alphas, they all set you back £1,470, which I think actually is a very good value proposition for what you get. Of course, shop around to make sure you get the best deal, but at that price, recommended retail price, it's very good. Specifications, it's 45 centimetres tall, 20 centimetres wide and 16 deep. Therefore, it's very unassuming and small, fitting into pretty much any critical listening room or living room as you please. There are four finishes, natural oak, American walnut, black oak as you can see here in this review and satin white if you've got more of a sort of minimalist Ikea living room. You may have noticed today that I'm wearing a cap for this review. I just want to tell you I'm rocking my inner zero fidelity mainly because I have lockdown crazy hair. The base unit comes in at 134 millimeters and then we've got the mid base unit on top there at 100 millimeters. The tweeter is 50 millimeter Emmet Planar Magnetic, which is a fantastic part of this speaker, which gives it a lot of the refinement, detail, width and dynamic ability. Frequency range on the website from Neat, well, they say the highs go as high as 22 kilohertz and the lows go as low as 33 hertz. Yeah, I'm not sure about 33 hertz. That's a bit of a push. For me, 20 to 30 centimetres out from the wall, I'm probably getting somewhere around sort of late or mid 40s, uh, which is still very good and very satisfying, but I wouldn't say you would get much into the 30s, although of course different rooms and different setups will vary. Impedance is 4 ohms and sensitivity is 86 dB. Not that difficult to drive actually, as long as you've got a good solid state 50 to get it going. You have essentially the neat iota speaker in the top of this cabinet in a sealed part. So that's gonna give you all of the great things you had before, that lovely planar tweeter, lots of dynamics, lots of rhythm, a really good sense of detail and musicality. But what else are you getting? Well, it's attached to the body of the cabinet, which has a downward firing bass um, woofer. So of course you're gonna get more bass and it's gonna fill out the sound even more than it did before. So if you've got a slightly larger room, or indeed if you've got a small room and you just want to really feel that bass, this speaker will now deliver it. Other than that, it's got a slight angle to the top of the cabinet, which means that you're going to get a really nice sense of space within the room. 
Before, one of my criticisms of the Neat IOTA was that actually you didn't get that sense of height for imaging. Now you do. It's pointing upwards into the sky, but that doesn't stretch out the soundstage in a way that feels unnatural. It just gives it that extra height. And because the IOTA part of this is in a sealed cabinet, it's even tighter and neater with its base or mid base delivery than it was before. So really it is an iterative improvement, which is very satisfying and definitely justifying of its additional cost. Let's talk about the cabinet in a bit more detail. So although it comes in many different finishes, it looks pretty decent, but actually for the price point, I wouldn't say that it is uh, sort of leading in its, its sort of finish. But as always, for me personally, I'd rather something wasn't beautiful, but sounded beautiful because this is audio, you know, and actually they look nice enough. They look pretty unassuming and would blend in pretty easily in most living rooms. And because they're so small, I mean, look at this. I'm holding up a floor stander. I'm spinning it around. What other floor stander can you do that with? It gives you options. And I've got to say, one of the best things about this is how easy it is to work with, okay? So it doesn't really matter what sort of placement you've got. I would suggest putting the planar tweeter on the outside in each of the uh, cabinets, but if you want a little bit of toe, that's gonna sound good. If you don't want any toe at all, that's gonna sound good as well. It fills the room full of a very pleasant musical sound that you don't really need to work too hard to do much with because it sounds immediately good and engaging. 50 watts minimum still reigns true for these as it did for the neat IOTAs. Um, and as I said in that review, to cover the same ground, the exposure amplifier, the XM5 integrated, is a great match for these because it takes the rhythmic quality of the speaker and the rhythmic quality of the integrated amplifier, put the two together, and you've got a very lovely combination, which works fantastically well. The kind of music I listen to through these, well, I think it's probably worth saying it doesn't really matter what sort of music you listen to through these, that's the first thing, because it does a good broad job of sounding great no matter what you throw at it. So I had a quick go with classical music, superb. I had another go with some indie rock and some, uh, some Muse, some of their older stuff, bit of plug-in baby. That was lovely as well because you're getting the dynamic heft and all of the, the kind of oomph that you need along with the refinement, which means it doesn't sound like utter trash. In fact, it sounds really lovely. Um, what I think you really should know about these more than any other though, is that what are they for? Who buys these? Who buys these speakers, right? This is what I was thinking about when I was kind of planning this review. And it's the thing that struck me most is that if you are a first time buyer, but you want to get into serious hi-fi, you want to kind of say, yeah, I want a big sound that's instantly enjoyable, that won't be too fussy about components or amplifiers, as long as I've got enough power to get them going, then you could easily slot these into your living room or into your listening room and you'd be very, very happy without having to go through all of the different machinations of matching things up with it at all because it works really nicely with a relatively uh, affordable DAC and it also works really nicely with a really expensive DAC. I tried it with a Denefit Terminator. I also tried it with the internal DAC within the XM5 integrated. There's a bit of a gulf between the quality of the two DACs both are good in their own way, but you're not going to worry too much if you've got one or the other because it scales well, whilst at the same time, doesn't make you feel like you need to invest in more expensive equipment to enjoy them. I also think this is a really good speaker for people that have been on the Hi-Fi merry-go-round for a very long time. So I'm sure as you get into Hi-Fi, you sort of get that excitement, you know, you. you you get that moment where you're thinking, oh, I've got upgrade-itis, I want to buy more things, new things, better things. You read the reviews, you read the forums, don't read too many of the forums because people are quite mad on them and angry. But once you've gone through all of that, you start buying different things and the system slowly but surely gets a little bit balanced in one way, then unbalanced in another as you add more and more components and it can get quite addictive, but also quite frustrating and quite fatiguing. And what the neat IOTA Alpha does is it basically says, get off the merry-go-round. If you want to spend a decent amount of money, but not a crazy amount of money, to get some really good sound that's going to sound really nice across a bunch of music, that's not going to shortchange you on imaging and soundstage, and it's going to say, hey, look, you know, just enjoy the music. Forget about all the stress on the forums. Forget about all of the 
measurement kind of anger or non-anger, depending on what your view is. And just enjoy a really good quality musical experience with a speaker that can live with you very nicely in the background without too much fuss, then the neat iota alpha is for you. Speaker comparisons then. Well, this is a, this is a tricky one because there's a lot of competition between the one and 2000 pound mark and a lot of good competition as well. And it really is horses for courses. What sort of flavors of sound do you like? Are you more into precision and clarity? And do you want a little bookshelf that's gonna move with you up the range as you get lots of different separates? If so, then you wanna go for the Kef LS50 Meta, which actually is a fair bit cheaper than these neat IOTA Alphas. However, they can't match them for their all round sound capability, bass and ability to create a musical soundstage which is very, very satisfying across all sorts of components. But maybe you like a little bit more air in your music. Perhaps you really are into those floating sounds which kind of all surround you. Then you want to go for the Bowles and Wilkins 705 S2. Perhaps indeed you really like indie rock and roll. Well, the speaker that I'm reviewing at the moment that will come out in a couple of weeks time, the Ophidian Mojo 2 is right up your street. They will do indie rock even better than these neat IOTA Alphas. However, I keep coming back to the neats are such a good all rounder and they're really very lovable. And I am taking my hat off and exposing my crazy lockdown hair to say awesome job, neat. Really, really well done. Totally impressed, totally satisfied and happy with these. And yeah, they get the crazy hair award from Small Room Audio. It's really tempting to get off the musical merry-go-round because it's so frustrating. I mean, it can be as rewarding as it can be frustrating, but ultimately, aren't you just looking for something you can love? And look at these. Why wouldn't you love these? They, they're just, they're really nice. And well, I'm gonna be a bit sad to send them back because they do so many things so well that now I have to get back on the merry-go-round and review other things. And uh, yeah, that makes me a little bit sad inside because I could have just stopped. But hey, that is the, the life of a reviewer, I guess. We've got to keep on going and keep on objectively looking for the next big, best, wonderful, bold thing. But if I had to stop right now and I was told I couldn't listen to any other speaker, I would be very satisfied with listening to these. So anyway, that concludes today's review. If you've liked it, please do like and subscribe and we'll see you back here very soon.